Hello friends and welcome back. In previous video, we had discussed about the heat conduction through plane wall and we had seen the thermal resistance of the plane wall. Now in today's video, we will discuss about the heat conduction through composite plane walls and we will see the equivalent thermal resistance for the composite plane wall. The composite plane wall will have two types of arrangement that is series arrangement of plane walls and series and parallel arrangement of the plane walls. So we will see today the series arrangement of plane wall and we will try to solve the numerical of that concept. Okay. So please subscribe to my channel for more educational videos like and share and please watch this lecture till the end. Okay. So without any further delay, let's get started. So this is the combination of plane walls or plane slabs in series combination you can see the walls are in series combination so let's say first wall is a second wall is b and third wall is c the length of or the thickness let's say thickness of the uh, wall a is l a thickness of wall b is l b thickness of wall c is l c so t1 is the temperature of the wall a, let's say we will mark this as point 1, this as 2, this as 3 and this as 4. So T1, T2 and uh, T1, T2, T3 and T4 are the temperature of point 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. So Ka, Kb and Kc are the thermal conductivities of slab A, B, C A respectively. Okay. So as you can see our temperature T1 is greater than T2 is greater than 3, T3 is greater than T4. So the heat conduction flow will be in this direction. Okay. Now you can see in case of plane wall the temperature profile is linear. In previous video I had shown the equation of temperature. In that also we had discussed that temperature profile is linear. Why it is linear? In that video I had discussed in detail. So in case of plane wall, we will get temperature profile as linear. Okay. Now, first we will see the thermal circuit corresponding to this combination of plane walls. So how many temperature are here? Here T1, T2, T3 and T4. Four temperatures are there. So we will first draw four lines. So 1, 2, 3 and 4. So let this be a T1, this be T2, this be T3 and this be T4. The thermal resistance between T1 and T2 will be the thermal resistance of the plane wall A. So let will mark as RTH A. The thermal resistance between T2 and T3 will be the thermal resistance of wall B. So mark as RTH B. The thermal resistance between temperature T3 and T4 will be the thermal resistance of the plane wall C. So mark as RTH C. Now what will be the formulas of RTH A, RTH B and RTH C? We will see that. So in previous video we had derived an equation that RTH for plane wall is equals to L by Ka. Where L is the thickness of the plane wall, K is the thermal conductivity of that plane wall and A is the area perpendicular of that plane wall where the heat is flowing. So the same equation will apply here. So for plane wall A, we will write LA by KA into A. Then for B, it will be LB by KB into A. Then for C, it will be LC by KC into A. Now you can here see that a, A, A is common in all three resistance. That is area is common for all three walls. Why the area is common? Because the heat which is flowing through plane wall A. Let's say the area of plane wall A is A, A, small A, A. And the heat which is flowing through plane wall B. The area of the heat or the area of the wall through which the heat is flowing for plane wall B will be AB and the area through which the heat is flowing for plane wall C will be AC. So you can see in series combination there is a perfect contact 
and line to line contact between these three walls. So you can see the area of this plane wall A is same as the area of plane wall B is same as the area of plane wall C. So from this point you can write a highlight or note that in series combinations of plane walls the area remains same. The area perpendicular to heat flow remains same but in series and parallel combinations of the plane wall the area will differ. How it will differ we will see in next video. So for time being remember that in series combinations of plane wall the area A is same. So this is the thermal circuit of this plane wall. Now I have to rub this much parts. So now we will see some electrical concepts. Now in 11th and 12th we had studied that when the resistors are connected in series, the electrical resistors when they are connected in series, the current across each of the resistor will be same means current at resistor 1 is same as current as re resistor 2 and will be same as current at resistor 3 in this series combination. But the potential difference or potential drops will be different at R1 it is V1 at R2 it is V2 at R3 it is Vt, V3 so it will be the potential drops or voltage difference. So in previous video as we had discussed about the electrical analogy related to the heat transfer subject so in that video we had seen that our electrical current I is analogous to heat flow Q. Our potential difference delta V is same as or it is analogous to our temperature difference delta T. And similarly our electrical resistance will be analogous to the thermal resistance RTH in case of heat transfer. So as the current in series combination of resistance remains same across each of the resistor same as our heat transfer Q will remain same in the series combination of plane walls. That means in the series combination of plane walls the heat transfer rate for, play, uh, for wall A is same as heat transfer rate for wall B is same as heat transfer rate for wall C. That means heat transfer rate throughout this arrangement will remain same. Okay, that means the heat transfer rate for all three walls, let's say for all three walls it is Q1. Let's say for all three walls the heat transfer rate is Q1 in series combination. And if we see for wall A, we will find the heat transfer rate is equals to same. That means the heat transfer rate for all the combination of wall is same as the heat transfer rate for a single wall. That means heat transfer rate remains same throughout this wall in series combination of plane wall. Okay. Now here we are assuming that there is a perfect contact means there is a line to line contact means what is line to line contact means perfect contact between these three walls. Okay. There is no air gaps or air pockets between these walls. So as there are no air gaps, no air pockets in between these walls, there will be no temperature drop across this joining line. So we will here assuming that we have a perfect contact. Let we have a perfect contact between this wall. This is the sign of between or I will write hole between. So here we are assuming that we have perfect contact between the wall. There is no air gap between the wall. So at interface there will be no temperature drop. Okay. Now we are also assuming that we have steady state heat conduction. Steady state heat conduction. And there will be no internal heat generation. Our thermal conductivity K for wall A will be Ka will remain constant for wall A. For wall B it will be KB will remain constant for wall B and for wall C it is KC and will remain constant as KC for wall C. So now in previous video we had derived an equation that is Q is equals to delta T divided by RTH. So we will use this equation here. Now we will apply this equation for first wall A. So what will be the equation? It will be Q is equals to delta T. What will be delta T? It will be T2. No, it will be not T2. It will be 
t1 minus t2 why t1 minus t2 because t1 is greater than t2 so t1 minus t2 divide by rth so rth for wall a is la by ka into a now we will see for wall b now let mark this as equation 1 now for wall b it will be q is equals to delta t divide by or we will write t2 minus t3 divide by lb by kb into a for wall c and mark this as equation 2 for wall c it will be q is equals to t3 minus t4 divide by lc divide by kc into a okay so here you can observe that i had written in all three equation as q only why q because we know that in series combinations of plane wall our heat transfer rate remains same for each of the wall and for whole combination of the wall so now we will take out the temperature difference on the one side and all the things on the other side so how i will show so first we will see from equation 1 so t1 minus t2 is equals to this multiply will go here so q into la by ka into a okay so this is from equation number one so i will mark this as equation four so same for two and three so for two it will be t2 minus t3 is equals to q into lb divided by kb into a it is fifth equation and i have to rub something so i hope you had drawn this thermal circuit i have to rub this so from equation 3 it will be t3 minus t4 is equals to q into l c divided by kc into a so we got the four five and six equations so now the second step will be adding equations 4 5 and 6 together so when we add this all three equations then this minus t2 plus t2 will be cancelled this minus t3 plus t3 will be cancelled and we will get t1 minus t4 is equals to q will be common from all three equations q and a also will be common so q by a into bracket l a by k a plus l b by k b plus l c by k c so this equation we will get so now we have to find the heat conduction means q we have to find so we will write q is equals to this a into t1 minus t4 divide by this whole thing l a by k a plus l b by k b plus l c by k c okay so this is our heat conduction equation in case of composite plane walls so you can see that here we had written that so this equation is also in the form of q is equals to delta t divided by here in case of a uh, instead of rth we will write summation of rth why summation of rth because you can see here this is the formula for rth a this is the formula for rth b and this is the formula for rth c means total resistance is added so rth a plus rth b plus rth c so we had written here summation of rth so this equation is valid in case of composite wall that q is equals to delta t this is delta t divided by summation of rth if you if you will divide the equation uh, by a in denominator and numerator then you will get this only that la by k a into a lb by k b into a lc by k c into a okay so this is our heat conduction equation through composite plane walls so now we will see if there are n slabs means n number of slabs are in series combination then what will be the heat conduction what will be the formula of heat conduction so we will write q is equals to area will remain same for n slabs also area is a and we will write so what is here t1 minus t2 
so the first temperature minus the last temperature so here will be t1 minus t of n plus 1 okay divide by take the summation of all the resistance which are coming between t1 and t4 here it is t1 and t4 okay so we had taken the summation of all the resistance which are coming between t1 and t4 temperatures so similarly we have to take the summation of all the resistors which are coming between the temperature t1 and t n plus 1 so here we will write summation of i takes value from 1 to n so here it will be l i divided by k i so if there are n numbers of slabs then our heat conduction formula will be q equals to a area into the first temperature minus the last temperature divided by the summation of temperatures which are, uh, which are between these two temperatures that is from temperature 1 to temperature 2 or from temperature 1 to the last temperature I am really sorry due to lack of time I cannot solve the sums of this topic in today's lecture I will surely solve the sum of this topic in next video lecture so that's all I hope you had enjoyed this lecture. If you have any doubts, then please ask me in the comment section. Also follow me on the Instagram. I will provide the link in the description corner. In next video, we will see the heat conduction through series and parallel combinations of plane wall and we will solve the sum related to that concept. Okay, so stay safe and goodbye.